sermon text again, Luke 19, verses 47 and 48, which we read as follows. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. So far the text. The name of Jesus, because of whom alone we have peace with God. Nicodemus said to Jesus, We know thou art a teacher come from God. Jesus taught, as it tells us in our text, he taught in the temple, the main church there in Jerusalem. But he also taught in other cities and villages, in their synagogues the local churches. It also tells us in the Bible that he taught elsewhere in the villages and cities. He taught in homes. He taught walking down the roads. He taught from boats. He not only taught in the villages and cities, he taught in the mountains and in the wildernesses. He taught in parables. Sometimes he taught without parables. He's a teacher. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus' face shone like the sun, and his garments were white as light. And there appeared, talking to him, Moses and Elijah, two Old Testament prophets. And as they were talking about Jesus' upcoming crucifixion for our sins, the Bible tells us a bright cloud overshadowed the mountain, and out of this cloud came the voice of God the Father, saying of Jesus, This is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. Listen to him. One of the most common phrases Jesus spoke, according to the Bible, is, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. He wasn't talking about anything other than God's word. Hear my teaching. Hear God's word. That's why God gave you ears in this world. To hear my word. To hear my communication with you. Well... If God told us to hear, to hear his word, where today can we find his word? Only one place. And that is the inspired words of the apostles and prophets. The Bible, the 66 canonical books of Holy Scripture, inspired by the Holy Ghost. Some people think that Jesus taught mainly children. Not so. In fact, the Bible never really says that he taught just children. I'm sure there were children in the crowds. But he taught mainly adults. And I say this because a lot of the people that I have talked to over the years have said things like this. Well, when I was young, I went to Sunday school. When I was young, I went to confirmation class and catechism class. And, you know, I went to these classes for years, then I was confirmed, and that's all I need. That's all the Bible study I need. I learned everything I needed to know about the Bible there. I've heard people say that. I've heard people live that. They think that Jesus teaches just children. 
or mainly children. His teaching is not for adults. They say, well, I've been confirmed, and I learned it all, and not only did I learn it all, I've remembered it all. I don't even need to be reminded of it. I ask you today, do you know everything in the Bible? Do you know everything there is to learn from the Bible? If you were to be asked any question about the Bible, could you answer it? Unless your answer is yes, you need to study the Bible more. Jesus said, we are to be taught, quote, all I have commanded you. All. And so therefore, in our text, it tells us about Jesus, beginning of verse 47, he taught daily in the temple. Jesus taught every day, not just on Sunday, and not just for an hour. He was always teaching God's word of truth. He had not taught all there was to teach in one hour. He had not taught all there was to teach in one day or in two days. He taught every day. He taught daily because there's a lot to learn. It's a lifetime of learning. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear daily his whole life. Now this text before us in Luke, and we're spending three weeks on Luke. Last week was Luke. This week is Luke, and next week will be Luke. All three will be sermon texts from Luke. But uh, in this text today, Jesus mentions, or not Jesus mentions, but we are told here in God's word, there are some people who didn't think it was important to listen to Jesus. They didn't think it was important to, uh, to hear him teach. That what Jesus had to say wasn't important to them. And surprisingly, these were the church leaders. The chief priests, the scribes, and the chief of the people. It wasn't important to hear Jesus' teaching. Well, they're not unusual. Even down to our day today, many people are like that. Just like these chief priests and scribes and chief of the people, people today don't find Jesus' teaching important. Not worth their time. They think it's more important to, to read things pertaining to their job, their career. They read professional journals and trade magazines and they think that's, that's important. That's worth their time. But Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you, these things you're working for in your job. Jesus said his teaching, God's word, was more important than trade journals and professional magazines. Some people today, like these 
chief priests and scribes who didn't think it was important to listen to Jesus. They think it's far more important to read the sports news. Now that's important. That's worth their time. Sports. And yet, I maintain that most people, if you ask them who won the NBA title last year, couldn't tell you. Or who won the National College Football Championship last year? Or who won anything last year, let alone two years or three years or four years ago? That's how important it is. Who wins or loses? Is it really important? that Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now that's lasting for all eternity. There's a lot of people in our society who think education is important, learning is important, but not learning the word of God. They think, oh, school, where you learn Secular things, that's important, to read those things and to study those courses, something. That's worth their time daily. But that's only important, again, for this short life, which may end at any moment. And all of that that you learned will be gone forever in school. But God's word prepares you for the most important thing, eternity, which will never end. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father. And of course, Jesus was speaking of himself. He referred to himself often as the Son of Man. The fact is, people who think that these things are more important than hearing Jesus' teachings, hearing the word of God, the fact is they love these things more than God. They love them more than Jesus. They love their job more than Jesus. They love their career more than Jesus. They love sports more than Jesus. They love school more than Jesus, and they show it by how they spend their time, by learning of those things more than the Bible. How much? How much does the average American spend every day watching television? I looked this up yesterday, it's currently four and a half hours. Four and a half hours every day, average American watching television in some form, whether it's on a TV screen or on their, their tablets or whatever they have, and an additional every day, two and a half hours on their computers. That's seven hours a day. And they have no time for God's word. How much is the average Bible used every day? TV, computers, and you got books, you got magazines, you got newspapers. All of those things, all those things are escapism. Escapism. Escaping from reality, 
running away from what's important. Eternally important. But God's word brings you face to face with reality. It's not escapism. It's pure, unadulterated truth. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth. The truth will make you free. The importance of Jesus' teachings... In our text, we're recognized by others. Not the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people. They didn't think Jesus was important. They didn't think his word was important. But there are others in our text who did think it was important. And that's the people in uh, verse 48. All the people were very attentive to hear him. They loved Jesus and they loved his teachings. They loved his word. And if you love Jesus, you will also be like these people and love to hear him. Love to hear his word. Now, why did they love Jesus? Why did they love to hear him? Because he talked to them as the Apostle Peter said, you have the words of eternal life. That's why they loved to hear him. He told them how to get to heaven. He told them how all of the problems of this life would someday be gone. He told them how they could have peace with God Almighty forever. And they love to hear this. They love to hear Jesus talk to them about how their sins could be forgiven. Oh yes, he talked about sin. He told people they were sinners. But they didn't stop at that. He told them how their sins could be forgiven by God. In fact, he said, that's why I came, that you may have peace with God. You who were enemies of God, you who hated God, you hated his laws, you hated his commandments. You, you did what was right in your own eyes and, and you followed your own sinful hearts and desires. And you disobeyed God, but... Like the prodigal son, you can return to God and he will forgive you for my sake. Because I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. I have come to give my life a ransom for many. I have come to die on a cross in your place under God's wrath and judgment. I have come to fulfill his justice for you and pay for all of your sins before God, so that in my blood you will be cleansed of all your sins, and you will be given the free gift of eternal life, and you will reign with me forever in heaven. And they love to hear these words. They love Jesus for being their Savior. And they loved it when he rose from the dead to prove it was true. And they loved Jesus' word. Prison. There's a minister who went to a prison, huge prison, to give a sermon. And he stood at a bridge and uh, between these stories of cells and uh, he, he spoke there and everybody in the cells could hear as he spoke from this bridge from one side to the other and after he got done with his sermon he went to visit the prisoners he'd go, go from cell to cell and, and he would ask them all one question 
he, he would ask them, why are you here? Why are you in prison? And the first cell he went to, the, the, there was two prisoners in there, and they were play, playing cards. They'd probably been playing cards all the way through his sermon. And he asked them, why are you here? And they said, we were framed. There were false witnesses brought against us. We are innocent. So he'd go to the next one and the next one. It was always the same answer. We got in with a bad crowd. It, it was their fault. They, they set us up for this. We're innocent. They're the guilty ones. We were innocent. And this is the same story got cell after cell. We're innocent. We're innocent. Then he came to one cell, and the man inside the cell was holding his head in his hands, and he was weeping. And the minister asked him, why are you weeping? And the man looked up and looked him right in the eye and said, because my sins are more than I can bear. The minister said, well, thank God for that. Because now, maybe, you'll be ready to let somebody else bear your sins for you. And the man said, well, who would that be? And the minister said, the Lord Jesus Christ. But he can't help anyone until they admit that they can't bear their own sins. That's the heart and soul of the Word of God. That's the heart and soul of Jesus' teachings. And yet, in a recent survey of so-called Lutherans, and I'm not picking just on the Lutherans here. They're, this would probably be true in most denominations. But a recent survey was taken of people who claim to be Lutheran, and they asked them how to get to heaven. 42% never even once mentioned the name of Jesus. They think they can get to heaven without Jesus. They think they can bear their own sins. They don't need Jesus. Jesus isn't important to them. They think they can work off their sins with a veneer of good work. how important it is to hear God's word speak against that and say, when Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The word of God alone is the word of peace. The word that gives us that message of how we can have peace with God forever. You'll, you'll look in vain in a newspaper to find that. You'll look in vain on TV to find that. You'll look in vain to the radio, news, to give you that peace. Jesus said, in the world ye shall have tribulation. That's all you get off the news, in the newspaper, or TV, or radio, or wherever you get your news. In the world ye shall have tribulation, not peace. Those whose ears are more open to conversation with their neighbor and conversation with other people and they're, they're listening very attentive to all the, the, the latest gossip. What the Bible calls idle conversation. Does that give you peace? No. 
Jesus said, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, I'm not saying TV is wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong to read newspapers. I'm not saying it's wrong to read books. I'm not saying it's wrong to talk to neighbors. That's not what I'm saying. But it is wrong, the Bible says, to put any of these things over as more important than the hearing of God's word, the reading of God's word, the study of God's word. Jesus said to Mary, she has chosen the one thing needful. And what was that? She chose to sit at Jesus' feet and hear him teach in her house. The one thing you need, more than all of these other things that people give their ear to. Because the word of God alone can bring us peace with God, inner peace, and inner contentment. Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Now, most of you, every week, are in Bible class. Some of you are in Bible class twice a week here at the church building. It's your church. And you're here for the right reason. To hear God's word. To hear Jesus speak to you through the pages of his inspired word. The word that God the Holy Ghost has given to you from the apostles and prophets. And of you who are here to study God's word, Jesus says this, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. The rest of you are here, most of the time, to hear God's word in worship service, and that's great. That's great, but I would encourage you that you don't want Jesus to say this of you because you spent your whole life thinking, well, I was confirmed, that's all the Bible study I need to do. Jesus said this, this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. If you missed Bible class this morning, you missed an important lesson from Genesis about how God, Almighty God, controls everything. History of the world is not by chance or accident or even under the control of men. God guides every moment of history in every detail. He moves the hearts and minds of presidents and kings from the beginning of history. All of history, as it's been said, is his story about how God has moved all events for our salvation. That was just the lesson this morning, and we used Joseph in Egypt as an example of that. But every time we open God's word, we learn something that is important for our eternal life. Let us be all led by God, led by the Holy Ghost, who's given us the Bible, that we may not be like the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people in this text, who didn't think hearing Jesus' teaching was important. 
let us rather be like the other people who were very attentive to hear him. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all of man's understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.